Now, for a few years, we've been using a Kodiak as a family car. And although it's a seven seater, we have three kids under six years old. We have three child seats, all with ISOFIX, and trying to get those three in, plus me and my wife, space in the two rows is just very difficult and she ends up having to sit in the middle of the two which is very tight and it's uncomfortable we're actually going on holiday to cornwall in well, what, exactly one week today so i thought i'd buy a, a transporter well it's actually a caravel this is a vw t6 caravel and uh yeah i thought i'd surprise her with it she doesn't know it's damaged she may have an inkling that it's damaged but then again i've never bought her a damaged car before so I don't know whether she's uh, cottoned onto it yet. She's actually on her way down here now. I'm going to reveal it to her. Um, I want to get it out of this position. I'm going to get it down the yard. I'm going to have it facing so she can't see the damage, so she can just see the rear of it. And uh, we'll get her reactions on the first reveal. But first of all, I need to get this presentable. We'll go around the spec and everything about the car, or the van, actually. I need to start saying van now. Is it a van? Bus. I'm going to call it bus. We're going to talk around the whole spec of the bus once we've done the reveal and she's going to have a look around it as well uh, and then we can go around the spec and everything. I did just try and pump up this tyre just so we can drive it down the bottom. I'm assuming it drives. I have no idea. I had it delivered here. A uh, guy just rolled it off the transporter and just parked it there. So I hope it drives. However, I have just seen a slightly uh, big split, which means I don't think it's going to hold too much air. Um, spare wheels right at the back there. I can't access it. So I think this i don't know if these are going to be the same as uh, car alloys or not so let's jack it up try and change a wheel and get it down the bottom before she gets here because i'm pretty sure she's actually on her way so i'm going to whip this front wheel off and then realize that i don't have any wheel or tire that would actually fit in this position because they're a lot bigger studs than a, like a normal car so i'm gonna have to take the spare wheel off which is quite hard to get to because i couldn't actually get it out of the back so i'm having to mess around jacking up eventually got it out and we'll get the wheel on and then we got some problems because the chassis kind of pushes back into the wheel. So I've got the wheel all on, but once I've dropped it to the ground, my bit of kinked bodywork here is pushed. It hasn't actually touched the wheel. It's about a millimeter or two away. So it is just about free. Uh, however, once I turn the wheel, it will hit it. So I need to be able to pull that out quickly before we can drive it down the bottom. So I'm going to jump in the JCB and try and use a ratchet strap just to pull it back about a centimeter just so we can drive it. Well, okay, that pulled out perfectly a good three or four inches. I've also just put the jump pack in there because there should be a battery here. I've just got terminals flapping around. So I've just put my jump pack in there. I hope this thing runs. Uh, it said it didn't run on the listing. Assuming that's because they ripped the battery out, that's why it couldn't start. So does it? Oh, we have power, yes. Right, I'm pretty sure there's no coolant in this. So even if I do run it, it cannot be for too long. Let's see even if it runs. Oh, I don't think my jump pack's going to do it. Okay, we are running on seriously borrowed time. My wife's now here. I've kind of got her in the workshop. My son's turned up and he doesn't want to be on camera, apparently. Right, let's quickly start it up. Come on, I'll put another... Oh, come on. I can't it, mate. In you come for the big reveal. Although, got a bit of a problem, we can't start at the minute. See? Broken. So right mess back there, Look, there's loads of parts in the back there. Parts that I didn't realise were going to be in the back there actually. That's a bit of a result. I wonder if there's an LED headlight that's not damaged, offside front. What do you reckon mate? Good, yeah. Good, yeah, fantastic. Right, we'll give this a couple more minutes and hopefully it will start up. Where's mummy, is she hiding still? Still. Okay, she's hiding. She's probably getting very angry. Hey, right, quick, quick, wait there, don't move. Uh. 
Ah, we've got no coolant. Quick, go, 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 go. Ah, uh, handbrake. Oh, don't like it. it oh no, I've just scratched all down the side of it. Very floaty. I mean, I've got it into position, but I cannot believe what I've just done. I didn't move the uh, battery charger away out enough. So as I was driving, obviously trying to get in a rush, trying to get it moving, I've just managed to scratch all the way down the side of the van. Proper, I mean, yeah, this panel needed painting anyway, but it only really needed blending there. So I've just cost myself, what, four or 500 pound for them couple of scratches? Brilliant, great start, fuming. I'm going to try and forget about that for the moment. Let's just take off the last remaining evidence from the back of any subtle hints that it may be damaged. I mean, the fact that it's dirty should be able to get away with. There you go, from, oh no, she, I'm going to have to get her to come from this angle. There you go. Ah, oh, we've got, I mean, oh, let's get rid of that tape. Let's try and remove any suspicions, if possible. Why is this really loud, annoying plane in the sky today? I'm annoyed now, you can tell, can't you? I've completely just ruined the good side of the van. Well, there you go, look, from this angle, it looks pretty good. What do you reckon? Look all right? Does it look damaged from this angle? No damage there, is there? We're good. Let's see what mummy thinks. Let's bring her in. Right, she's just on her way down. Off shot over there, look. Uh, she probably knows it's damaged, but let's see what she thinks. Right, there she is, look, off camera. First time you'll be seeing my wife on camera. Actually, at all. There she is. Right, close your eyes, you can't see it. Yeah, yeah, right. So if you just start walking forward, fill with another hand the container and just walk alongside the container. That's it. Right, Harley, come here, mate. Right, Harley. Come here. Yeah, that's it. Keep going. I can't Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Right, now go around the corner. That's it. Now walk along that way a bit. Yeah, that's fine. Right, stand. Keep going a little bit more. Right, stand there. Now turn towards me. Right, now you can open your eyes. Yeah. I mean, I like it. It's but massive. It's a bus. It's literally a bus. Is this where, your way of telling me that you want more children? Absolutely not. But you've got a bus. Yeah, but that's only because the Kodiak's a bit too small. Do you want to go have a look? Yeah. Go on then. I actually really like it. Well, sh you should do. These have got a massive following, these do. These ain't cheap. Wait, can I pop it up? Is it uh, no, battery probably don't work very well. Oh, there you go. I've never actually been in the boot before. I didn't clean it, so it's a bit dirty. Oh, that you can definitely get another chart. Have a look, go and have a look. Have a walk around it, see what you think. Are you going to leave it this colour? Yeah, I think so. That's a factory colour. Oh, oh what? Bloody heck. <laughs> Well, obviously not like this. That's a lot of work. You didn't think I'd buy you a straight car, did you? I mean, you have so far. Yeah, I know, but we've got to end that at some point. It's boring buying straight cars, they're too expensive. I mean, it's completely messed up. Yeah, I know. It's completely bad. Yeah, I know. That's the least of your worries. Wait, how, how long is this going to take you to repair? Is the idea that I have this instead of Kodak? Yeah. Well, if you like it, you don't have to. You can have the Kodiak if you want instead. Also, do you know how we're going on holiday in less than a week? Yeah, we're going to take this. Here we are. Here we are. I'm going to fix that in six days. 
I am. How much do you want to bet? Actually, no, I'm not that confident. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to fix this in I six mean, days. I think you can do most things, but that is a lot of damage. It is. And the fact that we're going to have our children in there as well. Yep. It needs to be safe. It will be and safe. I know, so we've just got to hope we don't break down. Is it, is it just like aesthetic or is it? Uh, <laughs> no, it's a little bit of body. <laughs> I've got these, I mean, yeah, I've got panels on the way. Cool. I'll be here by tomorrow. How, how does it run? Uh, with no coolant, it runs a little bit. It runs all right, I think. I mean, it's, that is pretty nice stuff, isn't it? it yeah, it's, it's a little bit worse than I thought it was going to be, but it's nothing we can't fix. Right, so anyway, I've got six days, so I'm going to kick you out. So it's been great. Goodbye. Goodbye. Don't Away you go. Inside, um, no, because it's really dirty and it's full of parts. So I don't want you to ruin. It's nice though. Yeah, I do actually really love like it. It's got electric doors, look. <gasps> that kind of work, but it's really oh, dirty. It's so, oh, my yeah, we haven't it's gone. Th space. We haven't gone through it all yet. So, stand, stand back. Right, you can have a look at all this. In six days is the next. Oh. Oh yeah, I've just scratched all the side of it, look. So that's cost me about 500 quid straight away. So we, we literally might have to leave that scratch there because I don't think I'm going to get that done. Anyway, I've got six days and you're going to see this in six days when I pick you up from home and it's absolutely mwah. Good luck. So it's been great. You can say bye-bye off your trot. Bye. 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 Say bye. Bye, Kaza. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. No, he's gone all shy. Wait, I don't know where Harley is. I lost him. Harley! Right, now she's gone, we can have a quick look around the bus before we get into the workshop, and I still cannot believe I've just done that. It looks awful, that scratch. But uh, I'll forget about that for the moment. Let's turn our attention to the front, and obviously you can see most of the damage near side front corner. Now, I have ordered loads of parts which turned up yesterday. We'll go check those out in a moment. It basically should be a full front end complete kit. I have also ordered a complete chassis leg. If I can just hold this up. Um, can I hold up? I can't hold it up. Okay. You just have to imagine. Um, I've ordered a whole chassis leg, so it includes this leg and basically everything up to this A pillar and back down. So I'm hoping I'll be able to like, drill out what I need to replace here. Um, that is the idea. So that hasn't actually turned up yet. So that will be here, fingers crossed by tomorrow because we need to strip off everything off obviously and uh, get onto that straight away. But let's just check out what we've actually got. I don't know if we can actually see anything at the moment. But there's a load of parts in here, which I didn't, I think I mentioned earlier, I didn't even realize I'd get any parts with it because they didn't show any parts in the interior. So uh, if there's an LED, oh, there's a battery, that's good. If there's an LED headlight in here somewhere that's not damaged, I can recuperate some of my fees because I bought a front end kit with LED headlights. So let's just shut that. So this is actually a really high spec bus. Um, it's got adaptive, wait. So the spec, I'm not too sure of, I don't really know much about the buses, but I know it's an executive, it's a bi tie so it's a two litre twin turbo, it's got 205 horsepower, diesel, S-Tronic uh, or DSG seven speed. Um, this did have LED headlights, adaptive cruise, it's got LED rear lights because it had LED headlights, it's got a reversing camera, uh, it's two-tone factory paint as well, so I think it's midnight blue and uh, what's the, I don't know what the white color, glacier white is it? I'm not too sure. Um, but other than that, I'm not 100% sure uh, what else you get on these. Uh, interior wise, Caravelle, don't know if there's a standard spec. We have full leather seats. We've got nice puddle lights here, look, in the foot wells, which is cool. Um, we have a nav unit, heated seats, and we have window blinds and LED interior lights everywhere. Does it have cruise control? Yeah, cruise control on the steering wheel there. So I think it's a fairly good spec. I'm not too sure what else they come with. Have I got a book pack? Of course I bloody don't. So yeah, right, that's, uh, time is ticking. Day one, let's get uh, up to the workshop uh, and I'll show you also my two pallets worth of parts I've got, which should replace most of this front end. Right, so let's make a start. Uh, first thing you need to do is just gonna whip this bonnet off, get rid of that 
Uh, take the battery pack off, get rid of that. We need to concentrate on this corner first and also then removing all the parts across the front. There's a load of glass here, which must be from the vehicle that they crashed into because guess what? I do not have a damaged windscreen, which is an absolute miracle. I'm glad as well, because it's heated. So that's another option actually this thing's got. Uh, so we need to hoover up all this glass, try and get rid of it as much as possible in preparation for this new part to come here. So I wanna try and pull as much of this out as possible, get it back to where it was before we start drilling things out, um, et cetera, and working out where we're gonna cut into. But also I've got my two pallet, uh, pallet loads of stuff, which is just over there. So we're gonna bring those in and I actually don't know what I've got. All I was sold was a complete front end. So um, hopefully it's everything I need. So we'll have a look at that too. So what I'm gonna do first is try and pull it back to a pre-crash state. And what that does is just help me when I drill out the panels, just to make sure they're in the correct position and they haven't moved where obviously the crash has possibly impacted it. So I'm pretty happy with what I've been able to do here. It's pretty much back in its original position, albeit a bit crumpled at the front here, which is just the extended bit which pushes in. And it's, I think I've, well, I've hit it, I've pushed it out slightly there, but we are pretty much back in position. Um, so when the new part comes, which is literally, I'm getting a whole chassis leg cut right back up into the top of the A pillar here. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to just drill out the rivets here and replace the panel, uh, possibly where they, wherever they've cut it, do the same with the other one and just replace the panel like for like, because there's actually two skins here. There's this um, outer skin here and this inner skin here. And then we've got some more bits down here and then a slight, a small bit of uh, box section to go at the bottom. Um, just show you the other side. Pretty much identical to all this look. So a bit of box section, and then we've got a reinforced bit there and a couple of panels on uh, the outer side. So um, yes, that's as much as we can do with that for the moment. So let's just take a look inside uh, and get out all the parts. Hopefully the leather hasn't been damaged, but see if we see what we got. So quite a lot of goodies in the back, 99% of it broken. However, there does seem to be one LED headlight which looks from the face of it undamaged. I don't think there's any lugs missing either. I will compare it to the other new one I have, but that could uh, get me some money back. That could pay for the repairs to my scratch door that I cocked up. But yeah, all this is junk. Uh, I think even the engine cover looks damaged. Yeah. Missing a part there. I mean, there may be a few trims, but I'm just hoping that everything that I've got on those pallets over there will cover everything that's damaged here. Um, well, one way to find out, I guess, but let's just move all this crap aside. I think I've got two fog lights as well, or daytime running lights, fog lights, uh, turning lights, I don't know. They seem to be both good too. And just like that, day one is already over. I did start this a little bit late in the day, but we are already down one day. So join me back tomorrow with day two and uh, yeah, we'll get all the bits off the new pallet and start uh, cutting out, or hope this other corner leg turns up and start cutting out the um, this damaged pillar. And we commence day two, massive tire delivery. Uh, four tires for the TT and some for the vans and the trailer. But let's go and get the pallets in and uh, yeah, see what we got. I've got my TT engine. Got my TT uh, engine and gearbox I've just taken off, so I'm gonna dump that and go get some pallets. Weirdest thing just happened. I don't know if you just caught on camera, but there wasn't a tire there a second ago. I don't know where it's come from, but it just literally just rolled down there and rolled into there. I mean, I haven't put a tire up there for months. So that's a bit weird. Must be friends. Well, 
right, all my parts are now laid out and everything is good. Uh, the majority of things are good. There are a few things I am missing which I sh what should have been included. Um, nothing major, I don't think. Washer pump. Uh, well, this is the old one. This is the broken one which I found in the door pocket of the Caravel. Uh, the new washer bottle here has one pump but was missing that one. Luckily, I can order, I've just ordered one for tomorrow, so that'll be here tomorrow. Um, and also the clips to hold this in. So as you can see, look, both of them are broken off. Um, and you can see here, look, there's my existing clips. Both of them are broken, so I need two new, actually no, I need one connector. I just need one of these, because it's broken there, look. Uh, so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that yet. I might have to nick one off the Leon or the TT if I desperately need one, um, but I've got to sort that out. And also I need one of these um, bonnet uh, bumper bracket. So I've got one for the offside, which is classic, the one I don't need, but I didn't get one for the near side, so I need one of those as well. Uh, that is, I think that is pretty much all I can find at the moment. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be other stuff once I start dismantling stuff. But for now, I'm gonna brush all this aside, all the mess, we'll roll it back onto the ramp, get it in the air, and we'll start taking off the crash bar, which should also be connected to the rad pack and everything, because I'm just gonna change the whole lot. So you can see, look, we've got the whole lot there. Something's got a hole in it, because it had no coolant in it, so, um, yeah. So the first thing I did was remove the wiper arms and the scuttle panel, which revealed a lot more glass and a lot more tree debris. So I hoovered all that out, removed the bonnet hinges as well, because one of them was slightly bent. Luckily, I have new hinges on the new bonnet. And then we just need to disconnect the whole front end, all the rad pack, everything like that, which is just pretty simple. All the hoses are connected at the back. So I just removed all the hoses. And then there's just four bolts on each chassis point. And then the whole thing kind of just dropped forward and pulled out. We've also had no gas in the air con. So I guess at the air con, um, condenser had been impacted as well and then we just need to remove the wheel wheel arch liner and just work out what we're going to do to remove this near side front leg right so front end off i'm going to do a test fit with the new lock carrier just to make sure they're fine i think they are so there shouldn't be a problem there this is the slightly more tricky bit though knowing what to do here uh my new post hasn't turned up yet but i believe i should be getting a cut out of all this area here um now if i were to replace factory panels there's quite a lot you have one here one here you have another one here another one here there's one there uh there's another one here as well and i think there's another bit possibly here i'm not 100 percent um but I phoned up Volkswagen and you could get this piece here, this piece here, and this piece here, but they were quite unclear on their diagrams, if I'm honest, and it just it was a bit difficult. Um, and the other problem is this panel here doesn't end where you think it would end here. It actually goes all the way down the sill of the car, which obviously, as you can see there, look, goes all the way down. Obviously, you're not going to cut, start cutting up and replacing all that, so you'd have to cut it off here somewhere. But I'm thinking with this new post turn up, I'm going to probably weld it in. I don't really want to agitate these factory seams here because I don't want to end up cutting up here and then bending this all out of shape. So what I think I'm going to do is this panel here, I'm going to cut the, the, the smallest point, so round to here and then straight down. And then with the new piece, weld it in there. Uh, we've got additional structures as soon as this will be drilled out. There's another post that goes down here. That'll be drilled and welded back in as well. So structurally, that will be absolutely fine. Uh, and this piece here is a little bit trickier because it's double skinned. So you've got the post here. And you've got the still this piece here that goes down the back of it. So I'm trying to work out the best way of doing that because this panel here actually goes right round into the inside and up to about there. So I'm obviously going to cut these out here, cut these out here and obviously drill these ones out here. 
So we're going to be welded on there, there, pulled up the back here, across the top. That's going to be all the like the factory weld points, and then it's just where I cut into it and replace. So obviously this panel, I'm going to cut into it here, but it's this second outer skin here which I'm still umming and ah on. So if I stagger it, that will just make it even stronger again, which I'm trying to work out how to do. So after staring at this near side front leg for what seemed like an hour, I finally worked out the best way I thought to do it. Didn't help because I don't have the new part here, so I don't know exactly what I'm gonna get, but looking at the pictures of it, I had a pretty good idea. So I just started drilling out all the panels. Luckily there's loads of them combined and connected so I can drill out and retain most of the factory points where we can weld the new part back on. But yeah, I was, I was quite happy with it. It went quite well that you'll see in a minute. And there we go, all cut out. Really happy with how it's gone, to be fair. Um, drilled out nicely there. And I've done loads of like staggered cuts here. So it's the way I've cut it. So I've only got a weld in like two small sections at a time. So I've only got a weld in this panel here, this little bit here, and then just the two bits here. Everything else will be factory, factory points. So where are the, I've drilled out spot welds, they'll be spot welded back in. So there's loads of points that are around here. So the only bits that aren't going to be factory is literally this two inches there, three inches there, two inches there, and this little bit around here. Everything else uh, will be back to factory. Now, I'm probably going to stagger this slightly, although this outer plate here, look, isn't actually welded. I mean, there's a, it does move, there's a gap. There's no actual spot welds at all, at all along here. So what I might do is just to even more uh structural integrity i might just stagger it slightly and take another sort of inch and a half off here so then it would be a nice staggered fit and then weld back on again but no really happy with how that's gone i just now need to wait for the new post to turn up so i'm going to move my attention quickly on to just test fitting this front panel here and uh yeah hope it all goes uh, on without any issues so taking the old one off the new one struggling to get on quite heavy but it fit like a glove beautiful and breathe. Right, that was a, a long old day, but we're in a good place. So the front end went on absolutely perfectly, straight onto its um, locating lugs. Uh, we are cut here, ready to get the new piece in when, we, when it turns up, which I'm hoping will be tomorrow. The only bit that I'm concerned about at the minute is trying to get all this in some sort of order. But I'm hoping when the new part turns up, it has a battery tray, I think, and a fuse box with it. So I'm hoping it's going to be self-explanatory and I'll be able to get things located. Uh, but everything else is looking good. The parts that I've ordered should be here as well. I forgot to mention, I've actually only got four days, not six, because tomorrow, which is Thursday, I'm at Goodwood, uh, and Saturday and Sunday, I'm at a show on Sunday for the, with the Focus, uh, Saturday possibly. So I've only actually only really got Friday and Monday to do this. To make it even worse, it's got no MOT. So I, I really hoped it had MOT, so I didn't need to MOT it to drive down there. But I'm going to have to preempt and book a slot for Monday to get MOT. So, yeah, time is really of the essence. So that is going to be the end of day two and the end of this video, guys. I really hope you did enjoy it. Please do like and subscribe if you haven't already to follow for part two. And also follow me on Instagram at saving underscore salvage. So let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. Remember to hit that subscribe button and like as well. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.